So, here we are. It's Christmas! And nearly five years later, I'm saying goodbye to a doctor as they regenerate into another promising actor with unlimited potential. Future me, of course, will know whether it was realised or not. But for now, we're living in uncertain but thoroughly exciting times. Let's get this over with. I've adored Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. I think he's one of the finest actors ever to have taken the role, up there with Tom John and the late great Sir John Hurt. So I was quite... miffed to hear he would be leaving alongside Stephen Moffat at the end of 2017. His era has had its ups and downs, but, and I feel kind of bad saying this, I believe it's had a better run than Matt Smith's, which was all over the place in quality stories. It is tremendously sad to see him leave the TARDIS, but I would say I'm happy he's left with a solid series and a TARDIS crew that is criminally underappreciated at this moment in time, at least by some. When we last saw the Doctor, he had both hearts broken and refusing to regenerate in the snow because he wants to be left alone after the awful day he's had. But knowing the fancy of Moffat is, he wouldn't leave without one big indulgence for old time's sake. Not only is the most recent Doctor refusing the change that's kept the show alive for 50 plus years, but he's run into the first Doctor, now played by David Bradley, hesitating to turn into Patrick Troughton. And Twice Upon a Time revolves around the Capaldi Doctor and the original Doctor, trying to figure out what's gone wrong with existence, and what a World War I captain, Mark Gatiss, and recently departed companion Bill have to do with it. Firstly, the first Doctor. I'm going to make it crystal clear, get it, that I love the Hartnell Doctor. The original, you might say. I love his TARDIS, I love Hartnell's performance, I love Ian and Barbara and Stephen Taylor, who was disgracefully omitted from a lot of best companion lists. It's not for everyone, but it's for me, and come on lads, you've got to give it to the one who started it all. He has a great presence of the Doctor and one of my all-time favourites. So when I saw David Bradley take off such an important character in the show as Mythos, I was ecstatic and moved a great deal. In Twice Upon a Time, Bradley's performance is essential. There are moments where I believed 100% he was the late great William Hartnell's character, especially in the opening, and that part where he sees Capaldi's TARDIS. I thought that was sound. What I took exception to, however, was the sexist or outdated views this Doctor took, which are ridiculously out of character. You can write off as pre-regeneration delirium or whatever you want, but it doesn't change the fact that Stephen Moffat misunderstood that Doctor. It's told bollocks that he would want to go from male to female based on the non-progressive views he once held. Total shite. Why don't you say he regenerates into Jodie Whittaker because uh, regeneration is a lottery, it's a potluck? Yeah, that bothered me watching Twice Upon a Time, not gonna lie. But I would say the nicest retcon of all the rewriting of whose mythology mythology <laughs> are the Doctor's final lines before his regeneration. Here we go the long way around. Better than keep warm, but not as fitting as it's far from being all over would have been. I'm not sure about the testimony thing either. And I think Stephen could have resisted a Dalek cameo just this once, rather than put in one of one most fans have pro uh, forgotten about, certainly the viewer. Not as painful as the one in Hell Bent, but still unnecessary. God help us when we do get to that monument of terror. That video could be as long as really that bad. No, it's Christmas. I don't want to harp on about the negative. I'll save it. Even though I knew Stephen Moffat also wouldn't resist the connect the dots idea, I can overlook the captain being Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart's father. Would I have loved it if he was just an ordinary Joe Bloggs in 1914? Yes. Does this taint in any way the poignant scene in the beautifully recreated 1960s TARDIS? No. Mark Ayes' performance is nicely understated and he works as the straight man opposite the crotchety young old man and snappily dressed rock star magician. Bill's return does not dampen the story in any way. I like Bill. She is the companion who best suited Capaldi, and I've always been a fan of the teacher-student dynamic scene with Ace and Sylvester. There's a wonderful melancholy in the Doctor's refusal to believe Bill is alive. I agree that her departure in Doctor Falls was eerily similar to Clara's, but it felt deserved. It felt appropriate, and yes, I smiled when Nardo showed up too. Matt Lucas, when he was given more to work with, definitely proved himself a worthy friend to the Doctor. 
Oh, and having name dropped her, I can't dance around it. Clara's brief appearance gave me the impression that Moffat was being apologetic for how he handled her departure. Going as far as to call the doctor for getting Clara is offensive. There can't not be another layer to that. I didn't mind it, which surprised me. Lastly, the closing scenes of this episode were great. The Christmas truce where one Doctor Who writer ultimately doesn't kill another writer, one whose output is equally hit and miss. No, all joking aside, the Christmas truce never fails to move you, whether it's a, whether it's in Joy You Noel or a Sainsbury ad, and this is no exception. The episode benefits greatly from Rachel Talali's vision as a director, aesthetically one of the best of modern Who. But how does Pierre Capaldi leave? Is it with dignity? Is it disrespectful? Is it one of the best? Time will tell. I really liked it. I appreciate Moffat's theme of moving on that the hardest thing to do when you're a companion is to let the Doctor go. Sound familiar? It's moving to see the Doctor hug his friends who aren't really there, but it's also triumphant and optimistic to see him accepting his fate inside the TARDIS and declaring if he's going to fade away, he'll do it right. Makes sense the Doctor's speech is some short and to the point with others long and passionate would leave on one. I adore the simplicity and metatextual layer. It's not just the Doctor accepting his regeneration, it's the showrunner moving forward. The last lines written by Stephen Moffat ever for Doctor Who are Doctor I Let You Go. Fantastic. Even the subtle moment of the Doctor's hand getting younger or more feminine. And that book end too. Well better way to say goodbye than to have the last shot of Pierre Capaldi be one of his piercing eyes and bottle top opening eyebrows. Then Jodie Whittaker's first scene. Epic. The amazing Doctor's theme once again. The symbolic ring dropping from the new Doctor's finger just like it did the first time around. A bit unoriginal to have the Doctor fall out of the TARDIS and appear that the TARDIS set won't be around next year. I liked it. But I'm looking forward to 2018. And if Doctor Who loses a few undesirable fans because of this, good. For every cynic who will feck off, there'll be ten more who join because of a daring risk-taking new era. At least that's why I hope is on the horizon. Future me will know. That's pretty much it now. I loved Peter Capaldi as a doctor, I've enjoyed Pearl Mackey's performance as Bill, and I'm going to miss both of them. I'll even miss Stephen Moffat. I've not always liked what he's done with the show, but I can't deny he's always cared about it. But if it's time to move on, then I will. I wait in anticipation for the Jodie Whittaker years and the Chris Chibnall tenure, however long that lasts. Twice Upon a Time isn't a grand go-home end of an era, but it's not crying out to be. Honestly, I'd hate that. It works best as a quiet close. A decent commendable passing the torch. Like I've said, it's not without fault, but it stays afloat by great acting, very impressive directing, and some nicely written scenes. And the strength of being the most significant change of status quo since both the first generation and the switch to colour television. Goodbye Pierre, goodbye Pearl, goodbye Stephen. We'll miss you, and I don't know about you, but as of this moment in time, the future is a bright one. Twice Upon a Time is Good Who. 7 out of 10.